Are you worried about bots and spam accounts and fake accounts on the various uh, social media platforms? Well, you must be assured that today is the day that you meet the fewest of them. Tomorrow, there will be more. Now, you could decide that uh, this worry should be translated into some kind of eradication of the bot problem. But I want to argue that the opposite is true. We must welcome bots and learn to live together with them in a peaceful and constructive coexistence. My name is David Orban and this is The Context. It is definitely the case that on Facebook, on Twitter and uh, every other platform uh, there are a lot of accounts that do not necessarily correspond to a single human and that single human doesn't necessarily control that single account. Are there also genuine, automated, constructive accounts? Of course. For example, uh, if an Internet of Things sensor uses Twitter in order to communicate the temperature, the humidity, or whatever other parameter that it extracts from uh, the environment and someone else takes advantage of that value incorporating it in an application after it being publicly available on Twitter, well, that is a completely automated, non-human account, which is certainly not spam, not fake, and in this example, definitely useful. So, between those accounts that want to defraud people, want to scam people, want to trick people into doing something that at the end will harm them, on one hand, and on the other hand, very clearly, the case of those accounts that, while non-human powered, they are uh, useful. What should we use? What should we decide? What should we um, tip the power towards? Can we expect each account to have uh, an ID card to prove uh, their human identity? Uh, and can we pretend that each human should only be able to do it once, forever? I don't think that it is reasonable to expect that uh, we uh, should do that. And those platforms that we'll try will find that it is either impossible or uh, undesirable. The value that we would lose by imposing this is uh, too large. On one hand, we must enable anonymous and pseudonymous participation on online platforms for many reasons. Uh, I actually articulated these reasons in another episode of The Context. On the other hand, uh, and this is what I want to concentrate on today, it can be argued that the increase of uh, non-human powered, human-like accounts, um, what you may call, at least today, fake accounts, can be valuable, they can play a useful role as well. You may um, already encounter online accounts that are uh, resembling a human, um, uncannily so, to the point where they may appear to be human to a lot of 
observers that are not aware of their background, their uh, history, as it were. But these accounts uh, do not actually hide their non-human nature. One of the most famous that you can easily look up on Instagram is named Lil Michaela, L-I-L-M-I-Q-E-U-L-A, Lil Michaela. And the account is a digital influencer with over 3 million followers. And uh, she uh, will go out with her friends, uh, take selfies. Occasionally, of course, that's her job, promote a given brand or a given product. It is the creation of an LA-based uh, collective uh, a digital agency and it is definitely uh, the sign of things to come because the advantages of these kinds of accounts are just too large to ignore. Well, she will never be tired, she will never grow old, she will never uh, rebel and leave the agency. Uh, she can be completely uh, controlled and designed and posed and uh, made behave the way that the agency that created it wants to. Now, of course, uh, an account like this is completely um, like a puppet. It uh, doesn't, um, at least for today, have any kind of autonomous uh, system where either the poses or uh, what she posts or the way she interacts uh, uh, is, is achieved. Everything is done by the puppeteers, the creators uh, of the uh, digital agency. But of course, uh, we are seeing more and more uh, ability in AI-based systems to actually uh, create images, create videos, create text that uh, can interact in a manner uh, with uh, humans uh, that uh, will achieve certain goals. There is an app called Replica uh, that uh, will keep you company. Is human company preferable uh, to a digital resemblance? Of course. Are there uh, circumstances in which if human company is not available, uh, the uh, digital uh, companion uh, is, if we want, better than nothing? Yes. And just like uh, the wave uh, of uh, Tamagotchi uh, in the 80s or maybe 90s, uh, these uh, 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 digital animals um, living, quotation marks, uh, in, in a gadget where kids had to keep them alive by pressing buttons, uh, feeding them, petting them, taking care of them, um, provoked a lot of uh, reactions, uh, even though um, they have proven to be a fad and they faded, um, there will be a lot of reactions around um, those accounts that pretend to be human while not wanting to trick anyone uh, in uh, believing that they, they truly are and certainly not trying to scam them, to defraud them. Now, to stay on the subject of, of, of scamming and, and defrauding, there are already laws against all of those and it is up to um, law enforcement to um, prosecute uh, those that uh, scam and defraud uh, humans or in any other way uh, harm humans. So we shouldn't uh, pretend that a platform should be by magic absent of these uh, criminal behaviors of human origin and we shouldn't 
um, mutilate a platform, uh, decreasing its value by designing it in a manner that, in our opinion, uh, should uh, a priori prevent um, a, a large uh, spectrum of human behaviors just because that spectrum can also include what we believe, and very often rightly so, to be undesirable. So, what is the solution? In my opinion, uh, bots should self-declare as such. And platforms that embrace bots and allow self-declared bots to exist on the platforms themselves are going to, in my opinion, achieve an important competitive advantage. LinkedIn, for example, uh, prohibits uh, bots, but it, it would be quite advantageous if I could uh, set between myself and uh, the dozens of uh, connection requests I receive every day, um, moderately intelligent automated uh, filter, uh, and why not that filter could have some kind of human resemblance? As long as it would declare to be a bot, the people wanting to connect with me uh, could um, interact with the bot, which would ask them simple questions. Why uh, would you like to connect? Um, and the pretty brutal way uh, that I typically put it, at least on LinkedIn, do you want to buy or do you want to sell? So this is just a simple example of a platform that could completely flip its stance from prohibiting bots to embracing bots and putting them to good use. And I think every platform should ask themselves the same question why are we prohibiting bots? Shouldn't we allow them? And if we do, how should they behave on the platform after explicitly uh, declaring their nature? Let's see if uh, there will be platforms that uh, understand that this is the future. Because I assure you, every year that it passes, the number of bots is going to increase potentially and that is definitely going to be the case maybe in a decade or two, eclipsing the number of humans. And we should, rather than fear that future, prepare for it, embrace it, and understand how to thrive in it.